SID, Super Light Integrated Design. Super Light indeed. Hey folks, we are back with another video and today we're going to be working on a RockShox SID Ultimate Fork. This is the B4 chassis version of this fork. Again, it's an Ultimate and it comes with a Charger 2 damper. There are multiple versions of this fork, right? You have a Select Plus, you have a RL, there might even be one more, I'm not that sure. And they're slightly different from each other, but overall, for the most part, the job is going to be very similar. So. We're going to be doing a full 200 hour service on this thing, full lower 50 hours, air spring, and full damper service. This is an easy enough job to do on this fork, and I am positive that you will be able to do this job, so do not be intimidated by it at all. The tools required for this job aren't all that significant, and ultimately, once you get used to it, you'll be doing it over and over and over and over, all right? so. Let's me and you go through servicing this fork in order for you speed demons to go out there and start breaking records. All right, next up, let's go over the tools and parts needed for the job. As for tools, we do not need many tools for this entire job, but I'm still gonna break it out into three sections. 50 hour tools, air spring tools, damper tools. Starting with a 50 hour service, we're gonna need a five millimeter socket, preferably, with an extension because it is deep in there. The two bolts are deep in there. From there, we're gonna separate the boot from the upper. You're gonna need an oil pan so the oil goes into so you don't make a mess. Then we're gonna remove the foam ring. Now you don't have to do this first, but if you plan on reusing your foam rings, then definitely take them out first before we use a tool to take out the wiper so we don't do damage if you plan on using them, your foam rings. So I use this Ice Tools tire lever iron because it's thick plastic, something with thick plastic, or just make sure you protect your lower when trying to remove those wipers because you could chip them pretty good. From there, we're gonna clean the lowers. You're gonna need a dowel, preferably a square dowel, with towels, rubber band, and alcohol. We're gonna need a container in order to put our foam rings so they could soak in oil during the whole process to make sure that they're nice and saturated. We are going to need grease to put onto the wipers. We're gonna need a wiper installation tool, 32 millimeter. This is a new tool I'm testing. This is one of those uh, Amazon cheaper ones to see if I could find cheaper solutions that work for people out there. So this one I think costs like 10 or 12 bucks if memory serves me correct, but we're gonna give it a shot. You're gonna need a torque wrench and when you're done, you're gonna need an air pump in order to fill it back up. All right, on to the air spring tools. The air spring on this shock is simple enough to service. You're still gonna need to go through the 50 hour process to remove the lower, but from that point on, you're gonna need a cassette tool with a ratchet to take off the air spring cap. Then we're gonna need a retaining ring plier in order to take out a retaining ring. Now this is a tool that I made myself to make my life easier. It is a M8 bolt with, well, nuts and fender washers, and I screwed onto the lower shaft in order to help me pop out the air spring from the tube. So once we pop it out, we're gonna to wanna to clean the inside of the tube, grab a paper towel, alcohol, and a dowel to push out the paper towels. Blunt or plastic pick in order to take out and change the seals. When we close it all up, before we put the cap back on, we're gonna to wanna to put a little bit, about two milliliters of oil, so a small syringe will come in handy, and we're gonna to wanna to torque down the cap. Next up, the damper tools. For the damper, the tools are simple enough, nothing fancy here. First, we're gonna start off with removing the knobs. Now, different versions of this fork will have different knobs, but chances are it's gonna be a two millimeter Allen to remove the knobs. From there, again, depending on the version of SID fork, some will need a cassette tool. The Ultimate B4 needs a 24 millimeter chamferless flat top socket. Make sure it's a flat top. Then we are going to remove Actually, we're gonna clean out the upper tube first. So make sure you get paper towel, alcohol, and a dowel to help you push out the paper towel. Then we're gonna empty out the damper of the oil. <sighs> a T10 Torx uh, driver in order to remove the screw, the bleed screw. Why not just do it, Alan, guys? I have nothing against T10, I like Torx, but why not just have consistency? After that, we are going to need 
soft jaws or vice with soft jaws, flat surface. We don't need any holes, just a flat surface in order to remove the seal head, which is 15 millimeters. You could do it with a wrench. You could do it with an adjustable wrench. You could do it with pliers, nipex. But I highly recommend getting a 15 millimeter crow's foot in order to torque it down. To me, crow's feet are the most important because they allow us to torque things down appropriately. Then for the bleed process, I use again my little tool over here, M8 bolt with fender washers, and lock washer and lock nut or a nut. And then we need to bleed the system using a syringe. This is your typical SRAM syringe. Uh, same thread types as, let's say, their brakes. You do not want to mix dot fluid with your fork fluid. So make sure that if you're going to use the same system, make sure it's totally clean or, well, just get a different, well, another set, okay? And at the end of it all, we're going to need to torque everything down with the torque wrench. Next up, let's go over the seal kits and the oils needed for the job. As for parts needed, for starters, we're going to need a seal kit. 00.4318.025.215. In this kit, we have everything we need, including dynamic seal grease. I'm not a big fan of this thing at all, to be honest. Uh, ultimately, they want us using dynamic seal grease in this fork. Personally, if this wasn't my fork, I probably would just go with SRAM butter. But I'm just sticking, this isn't my fork, I'm just sticking to what Rock Shocks recommends. All right. Now, Three weight oils needed for the damper side in order to bleed it. And we need zero W30 weight oil for the lowers and a just a little bit for the air spring side. Okay. Well, let's start tearing apart a fork. Before we get started, the one thing we want to make sure is that the fork is totally clean. You want to make sure that you have no dirt or mud inside the steerer over here behind the fork crown. And in this fork in particular, the boots are deep inside where the nuts go. So you want to clean out as much as possible. The last thing you want is to have dirt, sand, anything fall into the lowers when you're assembling the whole thing without you realizing it, right? So make sure it's totally clean. Next, we are going to take off the air cap and we're going to take down our settings because this is somebody else's fork. And I want to bring it back to exactly to where it was. Grab a shock pump and put it in there. And 98.5. And we're going to write that down. 98.5. Now we're going to slowly take out air and make sure you take it out slowly. Do not force air out. You want the air to come out from both the lower and the upper. And the only way to do that is to slowly let it out. Take your time. It's the one thing about these jobs, guys, honestly, just take your time, man. You're so much better off. There's no rush and don't let anybody intimidate you into rushing the job. <clears throat> and there we go. Whew, stinky, man. It smells like fish. Whew, what a rotten fish. Jeez, man, I'm surprised I'm still standing. That reeks. Okay, so I'm sure we still have some in there. We will get that later. Let's take off this guy. And put the pump on the side. Now we're going to go to our rebound knob and we're going to turn them counterclockwise towards the rabbit. And we're going to count the clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. What the? This thing was like turned all the way off. Oh well, 19, oops, that's rebound, 19. Now this guy in particular, he is a remote lockout, so there is no clicks, but we do have the low speed compression, right? So low speed compression, again, we are turning counterclockwise. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. So we got 14 clicks and that should be low speed compression. Bit of a mess, but I'm sure I'll make it out. All right, now let's take out the rest of the air from inside the shock. To make sure that we take out all the air prior to opening it, you do not want to open up a lower while having air inside the air spring. It'll pop on you, right? So what we're going to do is grab a little bit of paper towel and we're going to grab like, let's say, I don't know, three and a half millimeter, four millimeter Allen key. We're going to put the paper towel over it and we're going to depress the valve, right? See, some air came out and what we're going to do is we're going to push down on the whole shock. All the way to the bottom. Let go, let it come up, and we're going to do that again. Again, we want to make sure all air is removed. And the reason we use the towel is, well, air pressure will force oil residual uh, residue out, you don't want, or mist, I should say. You don't want to breathe that in, right? The towel will absorb it. Again, bring it all the way down, let go, and let it come up. And one last time, just for good luck. Before we open them, we have to remove the rebound knob. Just give it a good pull and it will come out. Put them on the side, we won't need them yet. Now, we have two bolts on the inside and they are deep. You are gonna need a five millimeter, well, Allen socket, better off with the socket because ultimately we wanna torque these down appropriately later. So, but you are most likely gonna need a small extension on it, right? So, what I'm gonna do is put it in there, find the bolt, and come on. Holy cow. That was in there tighter than it should have been. Three full turns. Okay, same goes to the other side. Do not fully remove it yet. We need to separate the leg from the shaft on the inside. So one, two, three. All right, next we separate them. To separate them, we're gonna need a mallet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a tap, All right? That's one. That's two. In fact, that one, there we go. See, you could hear the air. You, that, if you hear air, then it's separated for sure, especially on the air side. Well, mainly on the air side. All right, next let's take them apart. To take them apart, you're gonna need an oil bin, right? So let's grab our Allen again and remove. First, doesn't really matter, but that is our rebound screw. And now we will do our air spring screw. Like I said, they put them that deep so they can save weight on these things. And there is our air spring screw. Take them, put them in the bin, and give them a good jolt. And he should come apart. Ta da! Okay. Oh. Uh, okay, that's really interesting. I don't know if you guys notice what's wrong over here but there's like literally zero oil coming out of the bottom of this thing, like absolutely nothing. So uh, I'm not sure when the last time this thing got serviced, but oh my God, I'm looking at the foam rings and uh, yeah, to say the least, I think it's been a while. So it needs a service, all right? I'm just gonna let this sit here for a bit and I will be back. This thing's been sitting for a while and that's pretty much all the oil that came out of there. <laughs> it's funny actually. So we're not gonna be working on this yet. We're gonna first, continue on the 50 hour service, which is working on the lowers, right? But what you can do temporarily, uh, only because oil gets inside and it leaks out when you let it sit on flat ground, take a little bit of paper towel, put it around the rebound inner tube and let it absorb anything that might come out. Well, in this particular fork, I really don't have to worry about it, but I'm just doing this to show you guys, okay? Just tuck it in there and then you can just put it on the side and we'll get to it later. For now, we're gonna work on the boot. 
So first things first, let's remove, I'm so curious to see this, the foam ring. Oy. All right, so here's an excellent example as far as what you don't want a foam ring to look like. All right, we'll leave that in there. And the other one, it's not all that much better. <laughs> so definitely changing those out. Now, next up, we wanna take off the, take out the wipers. I have this Ice Tools tire lever tool. It works great. Uh, it's got a real thick plastic coating which helps avoid chipping the boot, right? You could use a wrench, just be careful that you don't chip your boot. Now, I'm high over here and there's a, not enough leverage, so let's see if this comes out easy. Rock shocks usually aren't that bad, but I might have to put it on the ground. That came out, garbage. And the next one, Again, it's harder on a table. There we go. That one was a lot easier. And garbage. <clears throat> All right. Next. Yeah, to say the least, we're going to clean the inside of this thing real good. Okay, this thing is like way dirty inside, right? So another part that came out is the bottom out plate, right? There's a bottom out bumper on the shaft, and this is the plate that it bumps into essentially to help dampen the air spring side. Put it on the side. Man, the inside of this thing is just filthy. I mean, take a look at how bad the oil is and look how much dirt there's inside the oil. I hope that there's no damage in on the bushings on this thing, to be honest. We'll take a good look once we clean them. Okay, as far as cleaning them, these guys are a little bit tricky as far as doing it the way I usually do it. And ultimately, you're gonna need some assistance. So, what I usually do is I grab oil and then I plug the hole on one side and I fill up with alcohol and then I shake it. The only problem is, in this case, I take out there's a little bit of oil inside there. It's hard to get your finger all the way through to plug the oil. Mine does fit. I could plug it, right? It's long enough, my middle finger. If yours isn't, what you're gonna need to do is, well, basically find something that will help you push against the hole in order to plug it like a little spacer of some sort, right? Anything really, right, that will fit in between, that'll clog the hole and you could use your finger to put pressure on it, right? So what I'm gonna do is first, we're going to fill this guy up with a lot of alcohol. Okay. And then I'm going to shake him. Okay. That's one side. Let's do them again. All right, shake them. And get them good. I'm gonna break up all that old oil, drain all the crap out of there. Now, one thing we're gonna do before we go further in this case, we're gonna try and clean out the best that we can on the inside over here. Grab a paper towel, stick your finger in there as deep as you can, clean it all out, see what I mean? Then we don't want any of that stuff going in later. So, now, everything come out clean the top over here you're going to do the same thing to the other side okay i'm going to do it on the other side i don't have to record it you get it clean uh, basically we're not done yet this is only halfway through clean the stanchion with as much alcohol when they're this dirty especially as possible try and get all the dirt out of here as uh, best you can and uh, clean the top and then we're going to go inside and clean everything let me clean the other side and i'll be back okay so i went ahead i cleaned all the heavy stuff best i could from the inside and from the bottom. As you can see, well, we can see metal now. So next up, we are gonna clean the inside. Now the way I do it, get a dowel, preferably a square dowel, right? You get a, a paper towel, leave about an inch and a half on top. Don't tightly wrap it, loosely wrap it, right? Just like that. Then we're gonna take a rubber band and put it pretty much in the middle. And what I do is I tear out a little bit on each side to create sort of like a mop. Now, 
We're gonna start on one side. We're gonna fill it up with oil. I mean oil, with alcohol. Okay. This thing's real dirty. What we're gonna do is go in there, counterclockwise, let it sit at the bottom, let all that extra towel at the bottom soak up whatever it can. And let's clean this thing because holy cow. And I can't imagine what some of these guys at the service centers see, but this one's, that's pretty dirty, man. Holy cow. Yeah. We're doing that again. All right. One more time. Paper towel. Leave about an inch and a half, two inches. Loosely wrap them. Don't tightly wrap them. All right. Halfway, put a last rubber band. Turn some loose to create like a mop. Fill them up again. Put this guy in there. Get them all the way down to the bottom. Let them sit at the bottom and let them absorb. Spin it around counterclockwise. All right. All right. Much better, although there still are some chunks of greased up dirt, like hard grease and dirt, right? So, uh, so I'm gonna do that again. So basically, I don't have to record it. You're gonna do that on both sides. And you're gonna do that, especially when it's this dirty, until you get no dirt like that, no thick, chunky dirt like that, or any kind of uh, grit coming out. Plain and simple, you want it all gone from the inside. So alcohol, towels, go in there and get it out, guys. That will destroy your uh, fork, all right? I'll be back. Holy cow, was that thing dirty inside. So I completely cleaned it out. Now, when it's that dirty, especially when there's so much thick grime in there, do your best to grab a paper towel and try and get underneath the bushings or on the rims of the bushings because it was just caked on. Right? Like I went in there and I wouldn't be surprised there's still some left in here. Nah, I got it all. But I mean, it was, yeah, there you go. See what I mean? It's like really hard when they get that dirty to completely clean them out. So, uh, but for the most part, I cleaned it out. Make sure to clean out that bottom bumper before you put it back in, right? Flat side goes down, the concave side over here stays up, okay? Now, what we need to do next, considering how dirty this was and how much grit there was in there, is inspect the bushings. Best bet is to put it against light, look at a reflection, and looking at these bushings, uh, there's definitely wear in there. Um, yeah, there's some scratches. Nothing really earth shattering or impacting, but ultimately there's absolutely wear in there. There is some surface scratches. Technically they should be replaced. I don't have bushings to replace them. Funny thing is somebody asked me if I was going to do a, a video on replacing bushings and well, what do you know? Now I have a shock to do it and I don't have the bushings. So anyway, this thing could still be used if you want to test your bushings, which you do. Grab your upper, I'll take out the bumper over here, clean it, put it in. All right, make sure you put it in the right way. Not like me, there we go. Put it in and see, without the wipers, right? Put it in and see how it, there we go. And see if there's play. Eh, there's a little bit. Yeah, I mean, not the end of the world, still usable. So, but not ideal, right? So, and that's why we keep up with that 50 hour service to avoid things like that, right? One, like I said, this thing, poof, there was no oil in it. It was filled with dirt, filled with grime. Amazingly, for some reason, the damper side had way more muck in it than the air spring side. So I'm interested to see what the oil is gonna look like in the damper. So 
Keep up with your 50 hour service guys. I'm telling you right now, in my opinion, that is the greatest return that you could get on a mountain bike. A 50 hour service on your fork and a 50 hour service on your shock. You will not regret it. It literally takes a few minutes once you get used to it and it is worth every second of time. Okay, next we will prep everything in order to get this portion of the service done. So by prep, I mean, we're gonna go into our seal pack and we're gonna grab out the lower leg kit, right? And we're gonna take the foam rings. If I can open this thing up. Oh, well, for crying out loud, look at that. Ah, stupid gloves. There we go, got it? There we go, we did it. Yeah, little baby foam rings. <laughs> we're gonna take a cup. We're gonna put some Zero W30 oil in it. We're gonna use the extra for later anyway. We're gonna take our new foam rings. We're gonna put it in there, pat it down, close the cup so we don't spill them, and let them sit there and absorb. Okay. We're gonna take this guy over here. We're gonna put him back on the air spring side. So crown on the front, air spring side on the left. Flat part goes down. Done. That is part one of the 50 hour service. In part two, at the end of this video, we're gonna be putting in the wipers and assembling it all together. Next, we work on the air spring. So for starters, we're gonna need a cassette tool and we are going to remove the cap on top. And this is gonna require a good amount of pressure. So, come on. Can't break it in there. There we go. Wow, this wasn't even tight. Our crown. All right. Should be able to take off the rest by hand. And there's our cap, and we have zero tokens. Let's take off the rest of the air spring. Now we take off bottom up bumper, put them on the side. Then Inside, we have a regular C-clip. We're gonna grab a retaining clip plier, put them inside, squeeze them together, lift them up. Be careful not to scratch the shaft, all right? And we will put them on the side. Now we wanna remove the shaft, the whole air spring. Now you can try doing it with your hand like this. This is where my little tool comes in, right? I just screw it in there. Just gives me a little bit more leverage because these things are slippery, all right? Put it in and give it a good pull and done our air spring is out next step let's clean the inside of the tube and then we'll work on the air spring cleaning the inside of the tool is easy enough grab alcohol spray it in there grab a paper towel scrunch it up into a ball oh now Push from the bottom towards the top. This way, if there's any dirt on the top and the threads over here, because this fork was really dirty, it won't push it on the inside, right? On the air spring side, it matters. The damper side, not as much. So when it's really dirty like this one, you definitely don't want to take any grit to come and potentially scratch the inner walls. So let's go upwards. That's one. And uh, yeah, pretty dirty. Let's do that again. All right, push them up into a ball. Put them in there. Oh. Nice and tight. Grab a dowel. Squeaky clean. Now what we're gonna do is come down here, make sure there's none, no dirt where the retaining clip sits and make sure you get all the dirt from the threads and from around the top of the threads. Out. See what I mean? Out, get all that out, guys. In fact, I'm gonna go through them with alcohol again one more time. Okay. Pour out this way. Clean it thoroughly. Cool. 
nice and white. Oh, I like it. Go in there. Now we can go to the other side. We look inside and outside of needing a little more paper towel to dry them up, he is spotless. No scratches, nothing. It's perfect condition. Good. I like that. Next, we will work on the air spring. Now for the air spring. So I had taken out the O-rings from the package, right? Organize them. Now, if you notice, SRAM says that for this particular fork, they would prefer, they would like you to use PTFE dynamic grease, right? Which they actually provide in the packet. And yet for the O-rings, they clearly state use SRAM butter. Personally, I don't like this stuff. I think this stuff sucks. I think SRAM butter for an air spring works out a lot better than this stuff. Uh, so I'm going to use SRAM butter, plain and simple, for the air spring for the internals on the air spring, all right? You guys have the choice. You could either use the, the dynamic grease or SRAM butter. I have better luck with SRAM butter personally. So let's clean this thing up so it doesn't make that much of a mess again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the piston. Well, technically that's a piston, but uh, letters go on the bottom. No letters go on the top, right? So let's just put this guy down. Let's clean this guy up. Let's clean this guy here. Now, we have fuel seals we want to change. We want to change this guy here, and then we have one on the inside right there, okay? That's where a blunt pick comes in handy, okay? Go inside, scoop this guy out. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Try not to use a sharp pick. And obviously, that's the old one, that's the new one. Then we go here and take out the one on top. All right. Now we have two of them that are similar. Yep, this guy here. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean this thing of all old oil and grease. Or grease. Oof, man, jeez. Let's clean real good. So let's go in there and take everything out. Make sure he is squeaky clean. Look at all that dirt. That them there dirt. Okay. Now, I'm going to try and go in the seat where the O ring sits. Clean him well. Make sure there's no dirt in there. We are good. And we're going to clean the seat where the outer O ring sits. All right. Ooh. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Okay. Clear the inside again. All right. Oh, wow. Thought I already got that pretty well. Let's try this guy one more time. That guy's clean. This guy's clean. And the third one should be a little bit easier again. <clears throat> and that one's clean. Cool. So again, bottom, that's the top. Was they're gonna go place them. We have, actually, let's first fix this guy up here. So start with the inside one, put some grease on him. And more importantly, what I do is put grease on the inside of the seat. And this guy should go inside pretty easy. Just give him a little bit of squish, put him inside and tuck him in. Did you see that? Hopefully you can see that. There you go. Pick, and he is sitting in there perfectly. Grab this guy, and we put him in on top. Done. We have one more seal over here. Grab a pick. Right. Again, blunt pick preferred. Put him on the side, and this guy's obviously that one there. Clean the seat. Let's 
Lord. Oh, bumper's locked on this one. Okay, yeah. We can't move that bumper, so. Let's make sure the seat's clean. All right. This guy here. Oh, some grease on him. Some grease on the inside. Something to roll around in. And done. Heh. <laughs> That's it, guys. That's how simple this fork is. Next, uh, actually, since we're here, we have the cap. There's another O-ring on the cap. It's the last one. Might as well change them out since we're here. Clean all the parts. So that is the old O-ring. This is the replacement O-ring, right? So clean the threads. Make sure the threads are super clean on this. In fact, clean the whole thing. All right. Try and get in there. Oops, not in the center of frame. Okay. And this guy's ready. Now, put a little bit of grease on this guy. Put a little bit of grease on the O-ring just to keep it nice and fresh and or keep it from drying out. And from the top, sink it in and make sure your threads are completely dry, All right? Grab a bumper, just clean any old stuff from inside here. Not an issue. Grab the circlip, clean any old debris that's on there. Next, we will put it all together, but I'm going to let the camera cool off for a bit before I continue. All right, I will be back. Time to put it back together. So first thing we're going to do, I'm not using dynamic grease. I'm going to use SRAM butter. All right. So we're going to take some SRAM butter, put it on your index finger, and we're going to try and go basically halfway up, right? Best you can. Put a nice little thin coat around the outside walls. Then we are going to take SRAM butter. I'm going to put it on the shaft, All right? And we're going to cover that spring real well. Be generous here. Don't be afraid. Grease is your friend. Now, no letters goes up. Letters faces down, right? So we're going to take this guy. We're going to put him in. He's going to be a little bit stiff. There we go. Put him all the way up. Then we take some butter, put them around him. Well, it's not in there, but it's okay. Okay. Then we're going to take him. Make sure this piston part is up against the top part, right? And we're going to take him and we're going to roll him in just like that. And make sure it goes all the way in. Need your body. There you go. Now, always make sure the shaft's all the way down, right? And that that piston is touching the top. Okay. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take our circlips. And if you notice, there is a rounded side and a flat side. Flat side goes up. Okay. Now, once again, be careful here. Put this guy in. Okay. Watch out with your greasy hands. Uh, there we go. Sink him in just like that. Make sure he spins around and he is in. Our shaft is not moving. We have no negative pressure whatsoever. Okay. Clean grease. The outside we want oil. We're going to take our bumper. The taper part goes up. Flat part stays down. Okay, now we finish up the top part. Before we close them up, we need to put a little bit of oil on the inside, right? So grab our little container that has our foam rings that are soaking. The syringe, two milliliters. All right, where are we? A little bit more. Yep, that's good. We're gonna take this and we're just gonna give it a shot right inside, just like that. 
Okay, let's close this guy up so we don't spill him. Put him on the side. Now we grab our cap by hand first. Make sure the threads are dry. Always by hand first. Keep that guy right there. Worst case scenario, go counterclockwise until you hear a click. And then he should be able to go in just like that. Okay, Remember, they don't give you a lot of depth on these forks for this cassette tool. When it starts getting stiff, we grab our ratchet. Oops. Come on. Come on. Make sure he's in the right position. Okay. Then when it gets hard, torque wrench. Now, if you have a metal crown, 28 newton meters, personally for these, I'm a bigger fan of 24, but I'm gonna do 28. If you have a carbon crown and make sure you get this right with a carbon crown, that's like seven newton meters or seven and a half newton meters, somewhere around there, right? So do not do 28 newton meters. If you have a carbon crown, you'll probably crack it. So again, uh, non-carbon crown, metal crown, 28 newton meters or 24 if you feel more comfortable, but I'm just gonna do 28. It's going to be a little bit stiff and they don't give you a lot of room in this particular fork when it comes to the cassette tool. Make sure everything's straight and up. It's going to start getting really hard. There we go. Now I'm going to get a better leverage here. 28.1. And our air spring is completely done. Next, we move on to the damper. We need to remove the remote control first. I, I really am not a big fan of these remotes. So two millimeter Allen, we're gonna start with the top cap over here, right? The low speed compression cap. Uh, take this guy, put him on the side for now. And then on the side, there is another screw, right? Right there, if you can see him. We're gonna loosen him. Okay, we don't need to remove him. We're just gonna loosen him in enough to remove him. And we're gonna try and remove the whole mechanism as a whole, basically. Well, there's that one. And that one goes inside. Yeek, dirty. I'm gonna clean that up just in case it gets somewhere else. So if it's all clean, clean it up now before we start opening things up. All right, in fact, I'm gonna get a plastic brush for that. All right, I got a plastic brush. That's a lot of grit and grime in there. And it's like packed in there too. Been there for a while. Got all that. That's from a remote. Some of it's caked in there real good. Okay. Some alcohol. Grab some paper towel. And done. Good. Next, we remove the damper. Now, to remove the damper, unfortunately, the damper side in this case, in this case, again, a different version of this particular fork will have a different head. Instead of the cassette tool, we need a 24 millimeter socket, okay? And chamferless. In other words, make sure it has no uh, bevel on the inside. It's perfectly flat. If it has a bevel, you take a big chance of stripping it, okay? So make sure he's on the open. Shouldn't be all that hard. Yep, this guy was easy. Easy enough. Hmm. No. So nearing it so far. 
Ah, oh. oh, come on. I'm so lazy to take off the socket right now. There we go. Oh. And that is our charger to damper. Let's clean it up first. And then we will empty out the oil. Before we actually open up the damper, let's clean the inside of the tube and get this out of the way. So again, from the bottom to the top, put alcohol in there, paper towel, bunch it up into a nice tight ball. Make sure it's nice and bunched up. You know, considering this is a damper side, that's actually pretty muddy. Like I said, the the damper side of the boot was horrible. It was really horrible. So my guess is there was a serious leak in the wiper. Let's do that again. Down. Through. Make sure the threads are clean. You definitely want them as much purchase as possible. Okay. This guy is done for now. We're gonna put him on the side and we're gonna work on our damper. So we have to open up the damper. You have two options over here. You could use a vise with flat jaws and attach the damper body to the flat jaws right on these little sections here, right? And then take off the top, pull out the shaft and the, uh, the rebound rod and empty it out, right? I personally, I've done that many times in the past. There's a few times where I've done it where I've like a klutz, I spilt everything all over the place. So I try and control it a little bit. What I do is, wrong one, take a T10 on the bleed screw, open it up, like I said, there is no right or wrong, wow, that's dirty. There is no right or wrong way. And basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cycle it. Wow, look at all that debris inside, holy cow. That's not good. And try and get you know a good chunk of that oil out of there first. And then, I just find it's more controlled that way. This way you won't you know mess up and spill it, right? And then I'll put it on the vise, clamp it down. 15 millimeter wrench, or you could use a plier or adjustable wrench in this case, and unthread shaft and watch out pulling it out so it doesn't spray all over you. And there we go. Yeah, that's dirty, real dirty. In fact, I might do something on this shock that I haven't done in a while, or in this fork that I haven't done in a while. So we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him on the side. Okay, now we're gonna empty out the rest of the oil. Squeeze the damper. Let's get everything from the top down. Oops, I'm not in frame, sorry about that. All right, so keep on squeezing. Wow, that is, that is like seriously bad. Wait till you see what the oil's supposed to look like. Okay. It almost looks like creme caramel sauce. Man, that guy was so right when he says dispose of this stuff appropriately and something that says don't drink. And yeah, please dispose of oils appropriately, right? Don't put them down the sink. Don't put them down a toilet. Don't put them in a the garbage. Don't throw them out in the backyard. Put them in a Put them in a container that's identifiable or at least identify the container as do not drink or do not, uh, well, you know, just to scare kids off and bring it to either a local bike shop, a local auto shop. They will know how to dispose all this stuff, okay? They have the means. Please just do that. Okay, I'm going to let this sit here for a bit, let the camera cool off, and we will be back for the next step. Okay, considering how dirty this oil is, I am going to do something that I'm not a big fan of doing. Now, if you regularly service your dampers, you don't have to do this, but this one hasn't been serviced in a long time and it's been heavily used. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it upside down. 
We're gonna pour alcohol in there and a good amount. Right? And shake it. Squeeze the bladder, get it all over the place. Okay. All right, and then what we're gonna do is empty it out. God, I almost wanna empty it out into something different so you can see the difference between what the oil's supposed to look like. So remember how dark that is, right? This is gonna lighten it up a little bit, actually. Now, turn it upside down, squeeze the bladder. Constantly squeeze it until no alcohol comes out. We don't want any alcohol trapped on top. It's not gonna evaporate. That's the biggest reason I don't like doing this. A lot of people could miss that part, right? If you have air, use air to blow it out inside, but first do this as much as you can. Squeeze it out until no drops come out. Okay, just keep on squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. The bladder until it all comes out. All right, just keep on going until there's nothing there and then let this sit on the side and dry. So this is where you have to be a little bit careful. They, in the kit, they supply, that's why these kits are so expensive. Uh, they supply basically seals for all SID fork options, right? And you really gotta read the details to make sure you get the right one for your fork. So this is a SID Ultimate Charger 2 RLC. So what I'm looking for is something that says RLC. So out of this, this is an RL110 to 120 SID B1. This one's a damper side charger 2 uh, RL80 to 100 or RLC B1. Now what's weird is that technically this is a B4 chassis, but ultimately I guess they haven't updated this, right? So I know that mine is an RLC. This is the rebound head, this guy here that I will be replacing. Now, some rebound shafts, you will be able to replace the glide ring. If you have a white glide ring, it's gonna be in one of these kits, right? Charger 2 RLC B1 or Charger 2, again, RL80 by 8100 B1C1. If it's a dark glide ring like this, you can't change it. That, that's done, it's fixed in there. You can't do anything about it, so you don't have to worry about it. If it's white, then you would grab one of these guys, if they're in here, and swap him out. I don't have to do that. All I have to do is change out the head, the seal head over here, okay? And then the big O-ring is for the top. So, or at least the black O-ring is gonna be for the top of the, of the damper body. So now that I know this is the seal head that I need to use, let's take them, them up. All right, we're gonna take this guy, I'm gonna take him out. We are going to clean this well. Just clean them. All we need to do for this guy is clean them. All right. Then what I'm gonna do is here I will use a bit of dynamic grease. Okay, we're gonna take some, we're gonna put them, well, right on the inside over here. Okay, or you could just put them a little bit on the shaft. Threads go up, okay, remember that. So, well, that was loud. You really gotta get that magnet fixed, just like that. Now we are ready to fill up the body with oil and close them up. We put the upper body back into the flat jaw or flats of the soft jaw. We're gonna take our three weight oil. We're not gonna fill them all the way up to the top yet. All right, fill them right about there where you can sort of see them. So about three quarters of the way, right? Now to make our lives easier, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start squeezing that bladder now, try and suck down as much oil. See what I mean? It already emptied out. Get as much air out of there as possible. Let's do it again, halfway. Keep on doing it. Massage that bladder now. It'll only help you out, make it a lot easier later. All right. 
try and do it until you see no bubbles. Although for me it's difficult. There's so much reflection because of that light up there. It's like blinding in there. Okay. Oops, see what I mean? A whole bunch of bubbles just came out over there. Okay, we want to get all that air around the shim stack. Ooh, look at all those bubbles. Lots of bubbles. What you can do is even remove it, right? And basically get a good squeeze on it. It's only going to help you out later. This is a lot quicker this way. That's looking pretty good. Okay, let's put him back in. Again, make sure he's on the flat spots so he doesn't fall. Make sure he's straight. Now we're gonna fill him up right to the top. And to give you an idea what this stuff's supposed to look like, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> awesome. Okay. right to the top okay now we're gonna put this guy in when we put him in make sure the shaft never goes down we always want it at the end like that okay make sure it never goes down when we put him in we're gonna put him in and screw him in do not put pressure down on the shaft you want him all the way up all right I'm gonna put this guy underneath because he is gonna spill a bit so could you see that well hopefully let me redo the camera again Make sure the shaft never goes down like that. Make sure it's all the way up. So we're going to take them. Oops, one more thing. Actually, nearly forgot. Take off the screw. We don't want to trap air in there. We want air to come out, right? So fill them all the way to the top. Come on. All right. Now... Again, make sure it's all the way down, pressed. Can you see good? Put them in, slowly in there, and then screw them in. Grab your 15. All right. And then 15 millimeter crow's foot, nine newton meters. All right. 90 degree angle. Remember to hold the crow's foot in the right position, bring it around, and boom, that even, 9.0. We are now ready to bleed. For the bleed, I'm gonna use my little tool over here in order to help me maneuver the shock or the shaft up and down, okay? Now you have an option, I put it on an angle over here so you can see it better, but you could absolutely do this on the side as opposed to doing it straight up, your choice. Um, so I'm just doing it so you can see it better within the camera. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take an empty syringe first and we're gonna put it in, okay? Then when it's in, what we're gonna do, we're gonna fill it with a little bit of oil. We don't need all that much yet because we already took out as much air as we could from the bladder. And what we're gonna do is squeeze the bladder again in order to help air get inside. I mean, get outside, right? So now we're gonna push the shaft in. All right, squeeze the bladder, pull it out, squeeze the bladder. Try and get as much air out as possible and then this is already looking pretty good in my opinion, considering. Okay. Bring it out. And then take your time over here. Time is your friend. You want to get out every bubble. One bubble works against you. Any hydraulic system, bubbles work against you. Squeeze that bladder. See what I mean? All the bubbles that come out when you squeeze the bladder. Okay. There's actually a lot of debris in there. That's not even bubbles. That's just dirt. I ought to get rid of that. 
Actually, I just might do that. Mm, I like doing it without sucking it all out. Wow, look at all that debris in there. It's all crap trapped in here. It's going to be repetitive, but again, wow. I better know better. I see more and more crap's coming out. Holy cow, this thing needed to be flushed. You see that, guys? That's all debris. That is not good. Stuff like that could clog the actual holes. In fact, what I am going to do... I am absolutely going to empty that crap out. It's actually changing the color. Holy cow. Okay. So what I'm going to do over here. Is, let's get this guy under here. I'm going to empty that out and I'm going to try and get fresher oil in there. That's all residual from before. That oil was that bad. All right. Let's empty it out. There we go. Now, let's put this guy back in. And fill it up. This time we're going to fill it up pretty good for now. And repeat. Bring it in. Get the bubbles out in the beginning. Just like that. Notice that? So don't suck it all the way in right away. Get those bubbles out. Fill up the bladder. Uh, okay. Now we suck in. Okay. Wow, we still got like a lot of crap coming out. Jeez. It's like thick stuff too. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at all that stuff floating around. Look how thick that is. It is like really not good. <clears throat> God, I hope the camera doesn't overheat. Okay, I'm going to keep on doing this. I don't want the camera to overheat. I'm going to do this for a little bit. I will be back, but I'm going to try and get rid of all of that crap from inside. I flushed it twice, right? Now it seems like the oil's pretty clean in there. So now I filled up the syringe like I normally would, right? With the plunger in the back. And we're going to put it in. And we're going to screw it in. And when we screw it in, first thing we want to do is vacuum out any bubbles that are trapped over here. And bring them into the syringe. And then... Okay. Now, now we're going to vacuum and use pressure, right? So we're going to push down. Right? And then use a syringe to pull back up. Okay. Now, what we can do, if you notice, when I press down the syringe, it inflates the bladder. Inflate it. Squeeze it out. Right? The whole idea is to... Get no bubbles in there. Remove every single bubble. Take your time over here, guys. No rush. Don't let anybody convince you that you need to be rushed. Okay? You're just doing yourself a favor. Do it a whole bunch of times. Cycle it. All right. Bring it up. Cycle it. Bring it up. Actually, don't do it that fast. Try and do it slower. Okay? Again, put pressure. I got to man, this thing's looking good already. Real, real good. I think we're just about bled. Okay. Keep on going a little bit. Let's do it again. Make sure we're not missing anything. Okay, let's vacuum out. See if we could suck anything out. Don't pull too, too hard, right? Just like create a little vacuum pumping action. 
whole idea is to try and suck out bubbles. Make sure you don't want to screw this thing. Oh, up. Oh, see a couple little bubbles sitting over there. Yeah, let's see if we can suck them out. Force them out. Oh, there's one little one. Let's get them out. Guys, I really think we are good. Just one more time. We are good. We've gone quite a bit. I have not seen one bubble since that little micro bubble that came up. I have not seen a thing. So we are bled. This thing should be free of air. Now, one thing that I didn't have to worry about in this case, but you probably do, we already turned the low speed compression all the way to the all the way open position. On this one, since it's a remote, it's going to be default B on the all the way open position. Uh, condition position so if you have um, a regular knob make sure your high speed compression and your low speed compressions are all the way in the open position i should have mentioned that in the beginning i totally forgot my apologies so remember uh, make sure your knobs are in the open position okay so this thing is blood one more thing I forgot to mention, even though we did this in the beginning, I should have mentioned that we should have checked it again. We want to make sure that the rebound screw or the rebound is all the way open as well, right? So we would use the tool, put it inside, hold the shaft and turn counterclockwise. Like I said, we did it in the beginning. I don't have to worry about it. if I turn it clockwise, it locks it counterclockwise opens it, right? So you should already be there, but it's good to double check. So we're done with the bleed. Now we have to close up the system, right? So what we're going to do is make sure, let me put this guy back in here, that the shaft is all the way extended. So it's all the way out, right? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press on the syringe. Okay, put pressure, let the bladder inflate. Then we're gonna let it go. All right, so it can naturally deflate itself and get into ambient pressure, proper ambient pressure. Now, waited a few seconds. Now we're gonna prep our screw. Okay, we're gonna unscrew our bolt here and we are going to put in our screw again. All right. Finger tight. Done. Next we test them. So this is a remote lockout. I don't have a knob that could lock it and keep it locked in the lock position. So I'm going to need a 13 millimeter socket in order to put in the lock position and keep it there. If you have a regular knob, then you'll just be able to put in the lock position and leave it there, right? In order to test it in the way we test it. So we're gonna grab the shock from the body, right? The hard body, not from the bladder. In my case, I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna take this 13 millimeter, I'm gonna twist him all the way open and leave him all the way open and keep him there in the lock position. What we're gonna do, we're gonna press down, okay? Onto the table, can you see that well? Hopefully you can see that well. So we're gonna press down and we do not wanna move more than two millimeters. And this guy's not budging. A millimeter, holy cow. I got him good. This guy's really well bled. Let's do that again. So totally locked, put him down. Holy cow, this guy's not budging. Nothing, he's not moving at all. He is locked, locked, locked. So they give you leeway where you can move up to two millimeters, right? If you go more than two millimeters, then you have to do the bleed. You got air in the system and it's acting like a cushion, right? All the air, the more air you remove from the system, the better this thing will perform because air acts like a cushion. So the job, and, and then it turns everything into a big foamy mess in here. So you wanna be able to remove as much air as possible. The more air you remove, the more of a lockout sensation you will absolutely feel, okay? So all we have left now on this guy, is clean the top part and change out the 
last seal. Okay. Open a bag. Take this guy out. I need the rest. All right. Just put a little bit of grease on them just to keep them fresh, keep them drying out. And again, we do not want to get grease on the thread, so we're going to put them from the top part in. All right, done. Now we install the damper into the upper tube, similar process to the air spring. We take them, we put them in. Try and screw them in by hand first, always by hand. There we go. Again, 24 millimeter chamferless flat socket. Make sure he is in the see, clockwise rotation. Okay, so I could like go by hand. And just like with the air spring torque wrench, if you have a metal crown, 28 newton meters or 24 if you feel more comfortable, because these, I mean, they don't give you as much threads as they do, let's say, with a pike or larger. So I think 24 is more than enough for them, but 28 millimeter, uh, newton meters. If you have a carbon crown, it's like seven or seven and a half newton meters, somewhere in there. Do not torque the damper down to 28 newton, meter, newton meters on a carbon crown, all right? You will do damage. So let's put this guy on, set to 28. Twenty-eight point one. All right. Next, we move on to cleaning and installing the controls. The first thing we're going to do is clean this because this is one caked on mucky mess. And like a bonehead, I should have hit it with a plastic brush first. Okay. Wait, man, a lot of crap in there. We're gonna have to go all in on this guy because I can still feel grit underneath it. We're gonna have to completely open it up, right? So underneath on the bottom, there's a little detent ball over here. Grab a flat pick or any kind of pick and press it in. When you press it in, you should be able to press out the low speed compression knob just like that, boom, okay? Yep, we got all the dirt on it. And since we're here, we might as well change that glide ring. So, what we're gonna do is clean this guy. Again, I should have hit him with a plastic brush before. A lot of crap in here. Inside. Make sure everything sits correctly. Get a clean rag. Okay. Get the dirt from outside of there. He should be all clean. I'll leave him on the side. Now, we have this guy here. has a glide ring that we are going to remove and replace. Come on. Oh, come on, don't give me a hard time. Get underneath and get out. Get out. Oh, come on. Oh. There we go. Okay. I'm on the side and I bet you the glad ring is in here. For the RLC is, well, this guy right here, SID32 Charger 2 RLC B1 packet, right? So 
Got the glide ring. Let's remove. Wow, it's all kicked on dirt down there. It's like hard mud. Move it all. Get rid of it all. Clean it all. Scrape it all out of there. Because remote controls, one thing I know is that they do not like friction at all. They turn into just a big sloppy mess. Okay. Make sure we got the inside. So he sits the way he should. Clean the inside so the cable sits the way it should. Let's drown him. Clean him up one last time. All right. Make sure our seat for our glide ring is nice and clean. Oh yeah, that was way better than before. Holy cow, that was a mess before. Okay, we have everything cleaned up. Now we put it back together. First, we're gonna start off with the Teflon ring. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on it. Right? Don't go crazy on this, just a thin, thin, thin coat. And we are going to put it in its socket right there. All right? Now, we're going to put again a thin coat of grease on the inside ring of the low speed compression. Now, um, Again, you have on one side that little indentation, right? So what we're going to need to do is put this in and squeeze that indentation in so it sits correctly. All right. So again, we're going to put it in and we're going to squeeze on it just like that. Can you see that well? And it should go in just like that. All right. So now that we're in. We should be good to go. Now let's put the remote back onto the, or remote knob back onto the damper. So as far as positioning, you have options over here as far as which direction you can position this, right? But if you look closely over here, there's a bit of a dent in the metal. That dent is from this set screw. So that tells me that they had it like this exactly. So it sits perfectly in there, right? Now we got that in there. Now we're gonna put in our low speed compression assembly, right? And basically what I'm going to do is try and even it out, force down as I turn in, and it should find a slot that it just sinks right into. This could be a little bit tricky, but nearly there. There we go. Oops, that's all the way on the side. Eh, it's okay. Right? And all my knobs work. In fact, I want this to be a little bit further down. It's not going to fall I bet you it's not going to fall even, but let's see if we can make it a little bit more towards the back end. So again, there we go. That's sitting where I want it. I want this guy somewhere around here. Get in there. Nearly there. There we go. Oh, that's a lot better. Cool. At the bottom. Perfect. I like that a lot. So now what we're going to do Take our two millimeter, finger tight. Don't go too crazy on this, right? And then take our low speed compression screw, put them in. And again, finger tight is literally like a Newton meter. If you make them too tight, it'll be hard to turn the knob. So just hold on to the knob and just a little twist with the finger and we should be good. Just like that. Perfect. We are doing great. Our damper is done. Now we just finish up the rest of the 50 hour service. For the rest of the 50 hour service, we are gonna basically install the foam rings, the wipers, and put everything together, all right? So first we're gonna start off with our foam rings that have been soaking for quite a while and should, should be nice and saturated. We're gonna take them. Now we're gonna make sure that they sit flush to the bottom and they are not twisted. Okay, and make sure they sit flush. That's one, and here's two. All right, again, these are very thin, so make sure they are sitting all the way down, all the way around, okay? Now, these are brand new wipers. They came out of this kit, brand new kit. I don't know if you guys could see if there's something wrong with them, 
this one doesn't have the retaining ring. It's underneath on the inside on both of them, but from the factory, they never installed it on top side on one of them, okay? That's not good. This creates pressure in order to keep that seal um, snug around the stanchion so dirt doesn't get inside. Now, I don't have any replacements. These are the old ones. I do not want to use these. They don't have this kink style anymore. So I ended up buying him a set of new ones just so I could get that one ring. Ultimately, I'm just going to use both of these. These are the SKF versions that are supposedly better. I've used them many, many, many times. To me, I don't know if I notice a difference, to be honest, but if you keep up with your 50 hour service, you shouldn't notice a difference. But we are going to take these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud, get out of here. These are the crush washers. Let's put them on the side for now. All right, and comparing them, they look identical. I don't know if they feel identical, but yeah, they pretty much feel identical. But these guys have actual springs on them. So on both sides, right? So make sure you check. And I'm just mentioning this because I got to admit, last, let's say four years, there's been a few times where I've had kids show up with like a missing seal or an O-ring or, you know, with something that is, you know, not right with it. So make sure to double check and don't think it's normal. If you see these things not on the wipers, that is not normal. You need them on the wipers. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take them off because I never install these things with those on just to make sure I don't kink them. I'm going to grab a little bit of grease. Put this guy on the side so we don't spill him. We're going to take a little bit of grease. We're just going to put a thin coat on the outside. Okay, not too much, just a thin coat on each one of these. Okay. Now. Oh, geez, it's right in front of my face. We're going to take this tool for 32 millimeter forks, right, or wipers. And basically what we'll do is we're going to install this in the tool. Bring them here. We're going to use a hammer and we're going to hammer him in flush. And look what this tool just did. For the love of God. Oh, always something. Unbelievable. Is he flush? Yes, he is perfectly flush, but apparently this is a new tool and these have too much depth. Great. Oh, that sucks. I could fix that anyway. Let's try and be more careful on this side. And he's perfectly flush. So I'm going to have to fix that. That's actually an easy fix. All right. Wipers are installed. Now we connect it all together. Put them together. We're going to put grease on the inside of the wipers. Just like that. Now I like filling it up the whole concave part. I don't know when these things, if these things are going to get regularly serviced, but if they don't, then you definitely want a little bit more than less. That's for sure. Hopefully they maintain the service on this thing. But it was pretty apparent that it hadn't been serviced in quite a while. And I mean quite a while. So. We'll put a little bit more over here. Okay, all right, so that takes care of that. Now, we're gonna take our old sag ring, toss it on the side, put the new sag ring on. Come on. Oh, for, there we go. Now, I'm gonna take my rings and put them on first. So again, we don't damage them. Okay, now 
Serial number facing you, crown facing down. All right. We're gonna take this guy and we're gonna slip him in. Nine frame. Let's try and get one side first. And then roll in the other side. Make sure it's not folded. And we're looking great. There we go. Don't bring them all the way down because we want space at the bottom. And remember, these are deep. Uh, we want space in order to put oil inside, okay? And that will be our next step. Before we fill them up with oil, let's prep our bolts at the bottom. First, we need to clean them. This one's pretty dirty, right? As is this one. And we are going to have to remove Grab a pick, the crush washers at the bottom. This could be a little bit tricky. My frame. So let me move this guy a little bit further up. Okay, a couple of crush washers. These could get stuck in there real well. So it might be a bit of a pain in the butt removing them. There we go. Nearly there. I'm gonna get underneath. Grab it carefully. That's one, toss them on the side. Now these sometimes could be a real pain in the butt in these screws. Oh man, I lucked it out. If all else fails, just use a needle nose plier. In fact, well now that I got it, but let me show you. Grab a needle nose plier just like that. And sometimes it makes it much easier to just get them out. Boy, this guy's really jammed in there. Really tight. Come on. Come on. There we go. Toss him out. Clean up one last time. Clean the threads. Clean these threads. Make sure this side's all nice and clean. Get the base in the corner over here. We want the best seal we could possibly get on both sides. And, well, technically, this side's not sealed. We get our new lock washers or compression washers. One and two. All right. Make sure they're sitting in their seats. We'll put them on the side. So now, RockShox says five millimeters for a SID Ultimate. I think it's the same for all of them. Five milliliters of uh, <clears throat> zero W3 or zero W30. Ah, uh, this thing is all stuck again. Good. Uh, zero W30 oil, right? Now, I'm gonna put seven because I don't know how often this thing is gonna get serviced. I'm hoping that they service it regularly, especially now with making this video. But just to be on the safer side, technically they don't want you going beyond it, but I don't think adding a couple of more is going to hurt. That's just about seven. Now, the one thing we want to make sure, but is that we have space at the bottom. I don't know if you could see that. So these are deep. Um, we want to make sure there's separation between the shaft and uh, the boot in order to, for the oil to go in. So I'm going to pull these out just a little bit. All right, just a little bit, even though I had some space, but I want to make sure I got a lot of space. There we go. Now I got more space. Actually, I'm going to put even more. Just a little bit more. Better safe than sorry. Okay, now I got way more than enough space. And this is actually a pain in the butt. In fact, that side's not going to fit. I'm going to need a different needle for that side. So this needle's going to fit. I'm going to take them on the damper side and inject. Done. Yep, nothing fell out. Everything's inside on this side. Unfortunately, that needle is too big because of this dent over here, or this indentation over here goes into the boot. So we're gonna need a different needle. I'll be back. I'm back and reality is I could have used this for both sides. Probably would have been the smart thing to do. I'm just used to just not using that or not needing it most of the time. So again, I'm gonna fill this up. This one I'm gonna do five because you gotta figure there's about one or two milliliters. And 
There we go. Let's go a little bit less. Okay. Now, make sure he sits inside. You'll know he won't be able to move around. And then we squeeze him in. All right. Open it up, squeeze him in again, just to make sure there's no leftover oil. It's all in there. And we are good. Now we take this guy and we make sure on both sides that we see the threads touching the base of the boot. Okay. Damper side, red bolt. Damper side is the one with the rabbit and turtle sticker. Go inside and by hand. Screw this guy down. Air side, black bolt. Again, by hand. Screw this guy down. Okay. Tighten him. Tighten him, finger tight for now. There we go. In fact, this one I could probably do a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we torque them. Torque them down. They say 6.8. I'm doing 7. Okay, make sure he's in there because it is deep. Oh man, I could have done a man frame. Yes. And we should be getting there right. There we go. Ooh, 7.1. It's okay. Not the end of the world. Make sure he's in. side. Emma, that's the problem with these. They're so deep. Not for crying out loud. Emma. Get in. For the love. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> the socket got stuck inside this thing. That's funny. Uh. Let's get the socket out. That definitely helps having a socket with you. And I was wondering why this thing was sitting so deep. Now let's put it in. Dumb things that happen, and trust me, dumb things are gonna happen to you. And it's totally normal. So don't feel bad about them. Anyway, get in there. There we go. Now let's tighten this. All right, 7.03. Next up, oops, let's clean our rebound knob. And we put it into the rebound side. Make sure he's tapped in there. Still, you hear the snap? Those are the seals. It's all snap. Make sure he's working. He should be in the yep, and he's working perfectly. We don't want to forget the wipers. We want to put the springs back on them. All right. Make sure you use something dull to put them in. Make sure they snap in there real well. Okay. Then. Hmm. I'm blown head. Yeah, man. Why are you giving me a hard time? There we go. That's one. And 
I don't have enough room with these 32 millimeters to put my fingers in there. And come on. two. Oh, this one I didn't get good. See, double check, guys. Come on. Come on. Be careful with your stanchions. Again, use a very blunt or plastic pick. Okay, this one just snapped in. That part is done. Ta-da! And there you have it, folks. We've just fully serviced a RockShox SID Ultimate B4 chassis fork. Very similar to the other SID chassis, but with the damper side, there will be some differences between the different uh, versions of SID, okay? Now, uh, one thing to remember all the time is when you for go for your first few rides, there will be grease coming out of the wipers, all that excess grease, just make sure you clean it after every ride so you don't get dirt stuck in there, making it harder for the wipers to do their job. All you have to do now is put your settings back, put the air back to uh, where you had it, the dials, and if you have, or the dials, the rebound dial, and if you had a regular compression knob or low speed compression knob, so on and so forth, all right? This is an easy job, guys. On this fork, they made it stupid easy, in my opinion. And there's no reason why you guys shouldn't be maintaining this, these on a regular basis. They'll just perform great all the time, all right? So if you like the video, please click the like button, click the subscribe button to uh, see more videos, click the bell, bing, 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 in order to get notified when new videos get released, all right? So hope all is well with everyone, and we will be talking to you all soon. Take care. Have a good one.